All right. Good morning, Crossview family. It feels a little different being up here in this capacity. Uh, and I, a few minutes ago, I was buzzing around in the entryway, running back and forth, thinking about some things, a million thoughts going through my head. And uh, Brother Dave Dreyer took a look at me and said, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know, man, a lot of coffee, a lot of thoughts, a lot of desire to do right by the body this morning. And he was like, well, slow down, brother, and, and get in God's peace and just bring to the table what you got. And that was a good, uh, good admonishment and a good reminder of even the theme of what I hope to bring to the table uh, with you this morning, uh, is that we bring to the table what God has given us, and through him, it's sufficient. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the Crossview family. It's more than just a body. It's more than just... A, a place that you go and attend church to check that block for the week. It is truly uh, gospel relationships here, and I am so grateful uh, to be a part of it. So I, I ask that you would be with us this morning, that you would be with me this morning, that I would not utter anything that would be dishonoring to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So my message this morning is about strategic love. And it's not so much a sermon as opposed to a brother, a fellow saint that moves among you and a gospel report, a gospel news flash. That's what I hope uh, today's message will impart to you, his strategic love. Well, let's move to his vision and his action in faith. Uh, in Second Peter, which Dave basically reminded me of a few minutes ago, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. And I had to have a reminder of that. And that's what we need to have a reminder of as we step out each day, as we just take a minute at a time in our day, let's remember that, that He's given us what we need to move forward each day, step by step. It's not going to be uh, crisp and clean uh, or, or easy to conduct, um, but moment by moment, he's faithful and he's with us and he'll get us through. So Second Peter also is, is acknowledging to us, is calling that, that we each have an election, we each have a calling, uh, and it comes in different different shapes, forms. Uh, we're not all going to be full-time ministry, but we all have a ministry. So our main idea today. Well, essentially, Crossview, I'm here to be, I hope, a faithful witness that God has been moving in our midst, in this local body. Uh, as we pray, and hope for components of a ministry vision uh, we want to be that's going to be sponsored by this body uh, we need to recognize and put into action these three key points his provision using our gifts and abilities applying his his strategic love that's going to build faith and eventually provide us that long-term strategic vision God's provision. A Crossview uh, has been and is being provided for uh, as we engage in his business of the gospel. It has been. Uh, specifics will come as they need as far as what exactly is our way ahead and what those steps look like. That will come when it should come. Uh, but as we remain in his word, we love each other, we not forsake assembling together in person or virtually and take his good news with us, uh, those things will be defined. This is a strategic season. You know, when isolation is declared as the healthiest option for our community, maybe it is necessary. But in reality, it's the, it's the polar opposite of community. 
Uh, nevertheless, though, his spiritual provision for us over the year should increase your confidence of his goodness. We've seen his provision here. We've seen his growth. We've seen the encouragement that he's provided us with new gen generations coming in. So let's prayerfully consider how we innovate uh, ways to engage, disciple, and grow. First Thessalonians 5.16 tells us to rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Uh, in December, as part of our annual church meeting, Pastor Jeff gave uh, his pastor's report. Uh, much like this is, you could say, an elder's report, a brother that's walking along with you report of what's going on in the body here. But Pastor Jeff had a pretty extensive uh, report. And at first, when we were sitting in the business meeting, that was how I initially showed up for the event. I had this business mindset. I just wanted to get it over with. I wanted to get our, our church offices voted for and just move along. But as, as Pastor Jeff gave his report, uh, it helped me catch the vision of, of the journey that he was depicting uh, that Crossview has experienced and is experiencing. Uh, we've seen Christ's action uh, in this body, his, his vision of faithfulness, his, un his kindness, his unfailing love to us here in this body. Uh, and, and it's also depicted in the sermon series that we'd gotten over the year. Uh, we'd visited Christ's action in Mark, uh, and the preparation of the spiritual soul here in this body. Uh, we've seen his steadfastness as he developed our perseverance uh, in the Joshua series. And finally, we learned about God's provision, his uh, unique provision, his non-standard provision through Ruth. A vision, a provision that, you know, normally I, I struggle with God's provision. I have it my way, and I just need God to follow uh, how I've set it up for him. Uh, but he's, he reminded me in Ruth that, his, one, his provision is ultimately better and ultimately what we truly need, but it's not going to line up the way we think as, as, body, as believers in the body, as men and women. Okay. Using our gifts. So in, in seeing God's provision for us, uh, we've seen his provision uh, in moving the church forward and being able to provide for, for church events, activities, programs, uh, investing in ministry, uh, bringing new and, and vibrant uh, members and regular church attenders here. That's all a part of the relationship as opposed to a statistic. It's about building relationships. So those are things of encouragement. And because of that encouragement that he's graciously shown us here, it should stimulate the use of our gifts. Uh, this is one of Crossview's calling cards, if you will. Uh, we have a deep bench of gifts and abilities in this body. We really do. And that's awesome. Uh, we must remain on guard, though, not to bury it in the ground like the unwise servant, right? Like that parable of the talents. Um, I have to ask myself regularly, what hinders me and my gifts? And that's what we should do. Not from a standpoint of guilt or coercion, but from the standpoint of relationship. All right, so what is it that hinders your gifts and abilities? Is it fear? Is it being hurt? Anger? Weariness? Ask God for some of his spiritual WD-40, if you will, of love to kind of break that rust off of your gift and abilities. It is not time, as, as Brother Tom prayed for us this morning, and, and what is happening on the world map, if you will, uh, we don't have time to be Christian tin man, uh, a Christian tin man, right? Rusting out there in the poppy field, uh, waiting for uh, the, the WD-40 to come. So ask the Holy Spirit for some spiritual WD-40, if you will. Now, we've all received different gifts and abilities. 
again, we may have the notion that, well, you know, I'm not a full-time ministry person, uh, so, you know, I, I do what I can, I attend church, I try to be a good person, if you will, but God tells us, uh, like I read earlier in 1 Peter, He's equipped us all, He's given to us all, uh, he's, he's made us all a decisive, definite part of His business. In 1 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you have not? So we've all been given, and he didn't give us that talent, that ability to bury it in the sand, to put it under that basket, to hide it. He's given it to us to use it, to exercise it, to keep the rust off, if you will. And we can do that in confidence through him and with each other. On uh, seeing the Crossview map unfolding, uh, we can be challenged and encouraged to offer our given talents and abilities. Uh, we are the building. Okay. Uh, and we're all needed to bear the weight of the gospel in action. Uh, this action is ignited by Christ's love in us. By realizing our secure position of salvation, I want to say that again, secure position of salvation, if you've received him, you are permanently secure. Okay. We see that we are truly free. Free from any human schemes, free from the death sentence produced by sin, even as we struggle in these limited bodies and fight with our natural state of choosing sin. Christ fixed it with an eternal warranty of his love and truth. This is what strategic love is. So what are some practical steps we can take? Okay, again, we are his building, and we are established on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus as the chief cornerstone. And that comes out of Ephesians 2, verses... 19 through 22. So with that type of building uh, structure, if you will, we can't fail. We can survive the storms. We can survive the trials. Uh, we can even survive the walls being sieged by those that wish to tear down this gospel. But our successes are only through his grace, uh, for, his, for his plan, and we cannot do it alone. And all are called to participate. To this you are called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. And that's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. As we do that, as we try to follow Christ's example, truthfully speaking, that can be wearying. It can be tiring. There's times that it can be discouraging even, uh, right? Because... We're talking about people relationships. We're talking about family relationships. Anybody out here that's more than, say, four years old, anybody realize that uh, family business is not messy? Is there anybody that, you know, everything's fine, you've got 30, 40 plus years on this earth, and you've never had a messy moment in family? Just wondering. Just, I, I wanted to talk to you if that was the case, because I need some help. I'm part of the problem half the time. So, uh, but again, w with this, Galatians 5.5 5 reminds us, for through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. All right, so we're pursuing this together. We're taking it a small victories at a time, step by step. So what next? Whereas... As Tom reminded us this morning for, for his timely prayer, you know, while we're all waiting for that second coming, we got to get to work. Right? The gospel is not a sideline, sit on the sideline, eat popcorn mindset. It is to roll our sleeves up together, arm in arm together, imperfections or not, and move forward. That's what it's about. Our, our trust and obedience arrive through a regular conversational relationship with Christ, first and foremost, 
which then produces that trust to accept his ways, ushering in wisdom. All right. So I, I'll definitely tell you, uh, again, I, some of you who are familiar with me, you know I'm kind of that application guy and just kind of let me take it a step at a time, and I don't mind sharing with you those steps that he often has to take with me. Uh, but I'll tell you, there's definitely been a season, even as a believer, I bristle at the word obedience. Why? Because I want to do what I want to do. But he, has, he is slowly you know, continuing that good work in me to build so that I can establish that trust through him, so that I can know that I am loved by him, so that I know that I'm secure in his salvation. And that is what we do for one another. As I, as I shake hands or give you a gospel hug or interact or have the salty conversations with my Crossview family here in the body, those are things that help stimulate uh, that growth, stimulate that maturity, that, that journey to wisdom, to true wisdom. First okay. Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 9 reminds us that for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, mutual affection, and love. So as we work out our salvation together, we take these baby steps in service, accountability to one another, good works, friendship, edifying, and partnering in this journey together. I hope as you see this, and, I, and, and I'm intentionally being repetitive, one, this is about being together uh, through step by step, day by day. Not a perfect step, not waiting for you to be completely arrived uh, at, at some whatever lofty level that you may have imagined in your head on what the perfect Christian may look like, but this is about a step by step journey together. So frequently, you know, our disobedience is a result of fear. Uh, we don't grasp hold of the assurance that we have uh, that, was, that was accomplished really through that great price that was paid for us, for we are his. I think we should remember that. We are his. Uh, the enemy likes to remind us of our failures and why God should reject us. But as the scripture reminds us, Satan uses parts of truths, part truths. Because while we were still enemies with the Lord, he reconciled us to himself, didn't he? There's a, there's a uh, word picture I want to give you of uh, the mighty oak. Everybody maybe heard of the, the, the illustration of the mighty oak, right? There's some uh, deep roots, strong base, beautiful canopy, symbol of strength. But here in North Carolina, maybe some of you have been living here long enough through hurricane season, and I've seen plenty of mighty oaks toppled over as a result of those storms. What I'm getting at here is when I saw a lot of those overturned oaks, sometimes with four and five foot diameters to them, you know, hundreds of, you know, 100 feet tall, huge canopies, there was a unique uh, feature going on with that particular oak. It was usually on a lot or out in a field by itself. It had nothing else to lock into. Here in the body, we have to lock in, lock roots together. We got to be like that mangrove swamp. If, you, if any of you have been down in Florida or, or maybe in some other places or you've, you're a Discovery Channel person or what have you, Think about those root systems that are so intertwined, interlocked, you just can't break it. And that's our goal. So as we move forward in faith, that's what's going to yield that strategic vision. As we build that, as we move forward in faith, Let's remember the analogy in Acts, where as, as the believers were looking up skyward, looking at Christ ascend, an angel was already in, pay, in place, 
giving me the day of dry. What are you doing? What are you standing around looking at? Get to work, man. Get going. And that's the attitude that we should have. Let's get going. There's plenty to do right here, right now. So our faith and vision. Why can we move forward? Why should we labor? Why should we add one more thing to our week, to our day, to our life? Because in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, he loved us first. Remember, we were still enemies. Maybe remember, look back. Maybe it was not that long ago. Maybe it seems like it was a, a century ago. He brought you from somewhere, from some state, from some condition, from some sort of drama. He found you. He brought you to him. He loved you first. That's why we can sacrifice for him. So what we've seen in action and, and what we've heard uh, in the word together, this is some of my elders report, if you will, of what's going on here in this body. We've been praying, we've been planting, equipping, serving. Should be refreshing, as opposed to reg freshing, but that's all right. Sending, receiving, gathering, building, investing, hoping, while we're waiting for that vision of the future. That's a lot of verbs, and I don't want to uh, tell you that we, we should uh, have the attitude of being exhausted, and I, I will address that. But those are the things that the, uh, in the journey that God has taken this body to give us the ability to do a lot of these verbs, if you will. But they're verbs through his love, his energy, as opposed to verbs out of compulsion uh, and coercion. There's no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. 1 John Chapter 4, verses 18. So our body has been alive and active. Uh, we've been laboring in gratitude and love. And we are receiving godly encouragement with, with new generations coming in with us. Uh, but active discipleship for our own development and to, help, and to help others grow is very, very critical. Active discipleship. To be active is sacrificial. It is. But it's different from unfruitful busyness, and we must guard that balance. A busy church is highlighted by a few burned out brothers and several exhausted women who are overextended and seeing programs succeed. But we are all called. There are times that we do need to rest. We need to re-energize. Uh, but this can only be done through our love for one another and bearing each other's burdens and carrying our own loads as found in Galatians. So this is love in action. This is that, that action verb because love is active. It's not a mindset or just a simple passive uh, condition, if you will. It's active. So his way ahead. What's his way ahead? Do we go out and uh, try to have a lot of first quarter, second quarter, third quarter goals and a big wish list and all of that? There's nothing wrong with that, but it is about our discipleship with him, our growing relationship with him, with one another, by one another, and through his, his kindness to us. Uh, one of my old units, we had a saying of by, through, and with. And I feel like I can apply that to the gospel as well. All right, so by his love, uh, by our friendships, again, through his grace and mercy, uh, through our growth and discipleship, and with one another uh, in Christ, we can, we can move forward. We can move ahead, his way ahead. So his vision becomes our vision when we engage the gospel together and inspire each, each one's growth through biblical truth and love. We inspire another's maturity through relationships, serving, burden bearing, investing in time, talent, and treasure together. Our obedience grows as the love for one another grows through the pursuit and application of God's word. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed 
and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. If we have that attitude for one another and engage one another, not with uh, Bible mallets hung out in our back pockets for one another, but in knowing that the gospel moves us forward. Sometimes it's through admonishment, through him, correcting us, uh, checking, our, checking our attitude, if you will. Uh, but it's through spiritual relationships, gospel friendships, uh, that we can move forward together. So why, we can, why can we succeed? He said he will be with us, even as some days we feel alone or vulnerable. He says he promised he was not going to leave us or forsake us. Just briefly back to faith and vision. James 2.14. What good is it, brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? And again, you can see my, my passage there is a, this, this verse should not be used as a spiritual mallet. We're not called to serve under compulsion. Yet getting beyond ourselves for good works he makes for us uh, is the beginning of understanding joy. There are many possibilities for good works we could engage in as part of our Crossview vision. Uh, the crucial part is to continue in realizing that we are fortunate to have sound teaching from our pastor. We're blessed with a body with deep roots, but God provided our gifts which we, have to use, which we need to use actively in gratitude. Uh, every generation is wounded or persecuted or is going without, endures sorrows, and waits in antici an anticipation for their reward. Every generation. But we can't hide our talents in this age. Sometimes it's a struggle to serve knowing what God knows about me and maybe knowing what he knows about you. It's a struggle to move forward. Because God can't be mocked. Uh, we can't earn our way by good deeds and yet be con content in our sins. So we repent, put his grace into action by taking hold of being a new creation and just fight each day to renew our minds. It's one reason that corporate worship is essential. So some final thoughts, and then there's one more slide after that. Uh, the last year, in my estimation, uh, is a strategic season. Whether the dynamics that are occurring in society today are just another bump in the road to engage our discernment, kind of sensitize us to what's happening, or whether this is another defining marker of Jesus' day drawing closer. Uh, it, will, it will be revealed in the right time. But discipleship is critical for two points, relationship building and to drive out any false teaching. In these coming days, as we serve, we need to serve wisely, we need to serve well, and worship together to love strategically. Worshiping together. There's a lot of power in worshiping together. And this is my last slide, honest. But there is so much power in worshiping together. Uh, I think I, I went through a long season of, of not appreciating that, uh, where it's like, okay, I know I need to go and I need to hear the message. I need to get fed and I need to figure out how to apply it more or less. But I was missing the spiritual power. I'm talking on the nuclear fission type of level power of coming together in worship in one mind and in his spirit. So whether that's virtually or whether it's face to face, but we need to worship together. So our faith produces good works and, and it also gives us the strength to confront our sins. It challenges us to grow and realize our security in Christ and convicts us with the desire to be a part of the body and then cast off those sins that hinder us. I have more thoughts here, but it is, it is time <laughs> for us uh, to, to stop where we are, to move forward. I, I hope that I've said something that has been worth your time, that's maybe touched your heart, that's maybe given you some food for thought, 
to move forward. How will you move forward with this body together? What is your time and talents bugging you about? Is there something, something touching on you, something nagging you a little bit? Then I hope you'll bring it to him and then bring it to the body because God says he's equipped you already to get it done. Let's pray. Let's close.